you know, well, that's what mine did, so. But anyway, it's good to be here with you today. We are going to read in John 18. John 18. Uh, I don't know, maybe if y'all might, if y'all might like the title of the message, but this is the only title that I could think of, a story that needs very little explanation, a story that needs very little explanation. I have a tendency that when I do a message, that I have a tendency to go too long. And I, and I repeat myself a lot. I don't mean to. But part of me wants to do the message the way I want the Lord for the Lord to do it. But at the same time, i got to keep in mind that when we're here for the length of the hour of Sunday school, we don't need to prolong it very long with the message, with the worship message. Because you're basically listening to two messages on Sunday. And it might just be more than you need to hear. So, but anyway, we're going to be in John 18. There's 40 verses in John 18. Now this follows up after the prayer that Jesus prayed uh, when he was praying for the disciples. We did that last week. Now we're following up on what happens on the rest of the story. Remember, Paul Harvey would always say, let us tune in for the rest of the story. Well, this story goes on after Jesus prayed for the disciples. The story moves on. So there's going to be very little explanation that I'm going to try to give on every verse because we'll be here forever, and I don't want to do that. Let me uh, break it down where I wrote some stuff down on some of these verses, not all of them. It says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into which he entered and his disciples. So they're on the move now. They're not staying still. And Judas also, which portrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted there with his disciples. And Judas, then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, cometh hither with lanterns and torches and weapons. In verse 4, Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Now if you notice the words whom seek ye is in red. Yeah. Jesus is asking the question. You notice here that Jesus sought them out. Jesus didn't wait to be found. Jesus sought them out. Whom seek ye? Yeah. See? And in verse 5, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. Yeah. I'm he. I'm the one you're looking for. And Judas also, which portrayed him, stood with them. Now this is the Judas that portrayed Jesus. Yeah. And it's spelling this out to us. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Now, they fell to the ground in fear. They were scared. You know, Anybody in their right mind would be scared of the name of Jesus. But a lot of people are not in their right mind. So they're not fearful of the name of Jesus. But them soldiers 
evidently must have feared that name because that name, they was afraid of that name. And they went, they went back. Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? See, Jesus is repeating the question. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Talking about the disciples. Let them move on. They, you don't need them. They, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Meaning I've, lost, I've not lost any of them. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Now, is that important? Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? He asked Peter a question. Shouldn't I drink this cup? Well, what was the cup? The cup was the cross. He was going to drink, he was going to drink the cup of the cross is what he's talking about. Verse number 12. Then the band of the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Ananias first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus to the place of the high priest. Now, it doesn't say who that person was, but I'm assuming that it might have been John. It doesn't mention that. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. But Peter stood, let me see if I can turn my page. But Peter stood at door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. That's the first denial. Yeah. We're going to read about two more denials. But this is the first one where the Bible records that Peter denied Jesus. Okay, so we read that in verse number 17. This is his first denial. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. He's talking about the doctrine here now. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort and in secret have I said nothing. I've not said anything in secret. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, that I have said unto them, Behold, 
They know what I said. These people knew what Jesus said. They know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? See, they already started getting angry with Jesus because they hit him. Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, meaning if I spoke well, why smitest thou me? I'm telling you the truth. Jesus ain't lying here. Now Anias had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. Now listen to verse 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. That's number two. Remember that Peter was going to deny the Lord three times? Right, right there is number two. Yeah. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? See, he's asking a question here. Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crowed. Meaning Peter heard the chicken crow the third time. And at the third time, he remembered. He did. He remembered. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas, unto the hall of ju judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. See, they had a custom, is what they was doing. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation... Bring ye against this man. It sounds to me like that this man Pilate was trying to help Jesus. And he was, I think. Part of him was trying to help because he said, What accusation bring ye against this man? Well, they answered and said unto him, if he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Meaning if he wasn't a male factor. Let's go on and see if it explains itself. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. Don't bring him to me. Yeah. Judge him for your own law. Right. The Jews therefore said unto him, it is not lawful for us to put a man to death. See, Pilate knew that. Yeah. But Pilate didn't want to have innocent blood on his hands either. Mm -hmm. So he goes and says, judge him by your law. Right. If y'all want to kill him, kill him. But do it on your law. Don't bring him to me. Right. Don't, don't accuse me of me being the one. But listen to what the people said that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. He's referring to Matthew 20 in verse number 19, according to my Bible. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Now, if you notice, the word kings is capitalized. That lets me know that Pilate really didn't want to take him out because he honored him as being king of the Jews. Art thou the king of the Jews? He's waiting for an answer because he asked a question. Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? 
or did others tell it to thee and me? Did you know it by grace and truth? Or did you hear through the grapevine that I was the king of the Jews? There's a lot of people that hear through the grapevine, but they don't have no heart. See, this man Pilate was asking, and Jesus even said, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell it thee of me? Did others blab that I was the king of the Jews? Or do you believe yourself that I am the king of the Jews? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Now when I saw that, I don't remember reading that ever. Am I a Jew? Pilate asked this of Jesus. Thy own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? What did Jesus do? What did he do? He came to do God's will. God sent him to the earth to do God's will. So if you had to come up with an answer of what did Jesus do, he came to do what God told him to do. But see, Pilate wasn't going to understand that depth of that question. What hast thou done? Jesus answered. My kingdom is not of this world. It's not of the world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. Talking about all the disciples would fight, but they didn't fight. Then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Meaning, my kingdom is not from right here. He's telling Pilate that now. Now, verse 37 is really where our message is. I wrote, I read you the Bible all the way down so that verse 37 down to 40 can be sort of where we hone in on. This is the, all the rest of the part is important, but this part at the very end in verse 37 down is sort of the gravy. This is the gravy of the ending of the chapter. Listen to verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Now you notice that word king is not capitalized. Not in my Bible. Thou sayest that I am a king. In the way Pilate looks at it, even though Pilate was saying you're a king, Pilate didn't know Jesus as Savior. He couldn't use the capital K for the word king because he didn't know the king of kings. He didn't know the Lord of lords. So it matters when you read the Bible that when it says here, Thou sayest that I am a king. He didn't know the king of salvation. That's the reason he's narrowing down what he's saying right here. To this end was I born. Now this is Jesus talking now. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I unto the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. See, Jesus had a mission, and that was to tell the truth. And that's what he's telling Pilate in red letters right here. I come to this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone of the truth is going to know me in my voice. I want to thank Sheila. I know him by my voice. Yeah. Because I recognize him as King 
of kings and Lord of lords. See, if I didn't recognize him as the capital K, I would be no different than Pilate was. Because Pilate didn't know him as Lord. He knew him as the man Jesus. He heard about the man Jesus. But let's look at verse 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? You know, that there's powerful. When Pilate said, what is truth? I wish everybody would be able to hear from this message right now, what is truth? Yeah. Wouldn't it be neat if we had 25 people in here asking the question, what is truth? Yeah. You know what I would say? I would go back to John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And what did the, what did the disciples say? Tell us about this. And what did Jesus say? I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Nobody's going to get to heaven by skirting around the truth. They're not going to do it. You either know Jesus as King of Kings or you know him as a simple man. This man, Pilate, knew him as a simple, everyday man that called himself a king, that said he was a Jew. Pilate even admits that I'm a Jew, but yet Pilate didn't really know him as king of kings. Would, would he have allowed Jesus to die if he would have known him as the king of kings? I don't believe he would have. But what did he say in this verses that we just read? If you be the king. He asked him if he was a king. Remember where we read? Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Yeah. See, Pilate was doing everything he could, right. but it, the story's not done yet. But ye have a custom. Now who is Pilate talking to? He's talking to the Jews. Yeah. But ye have a custom. See, the custom is what nailed Jesus to the cross. The custom of what the Jews was doing, that was what was taking Jesus out and putting him on the cross. It ain't got there yet. But he says here, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. See, at the Passover... The people got to select which one would die and which one would they select to let go. Guess which one they let go? The one that was a thief. Now, was that all that he was guilty of? I think he was guilty of more than just that myself personally. But the Bible says, Will ye, will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews. Now, that word K is capitalized. Should I release this king of the Jews? Does that mean that Pilate knew Jesus as Lord? No. He's just given him honor because he's going to the cross. So Pilate still don't know Jesus in salvation. He's only given him credit that, look, what did he say up there? I find no fault in him at all. I find no fault. Now, the translator added the word at all. If you look at the Bible, the, the, the twisted letters was added by the translator, but he says, I find in him no fault. None. Zero, nada, none. 
Well, look what he says. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Now look at verse 40. This is the last verse now. Then cried they all again, talking about the people, the Jews now, saying, not this man. We don't want you to release this man of the king of the Jews. No, not this man. They were talking about Jesus. Not this man, but Barabbas. Did them Jews know Barabbas? Oh, yeah. Do you think that maybe Barabbas could have stole from the Jews? Yeah. Them Jews knew who Barabbas was. But they would rather have him. You know why? Because Jesus made himself God. They thought in their own thinking that Jesus made himself equal to God. No, no. Jesus didn't make himself God. He was God. But people couldn't see it. Right, right. People couldn't notice it. People had no idea that they was nailing Jesus to a cross. Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. You know, the Jews... Decided which man. Whether they was going to select Jesus. Or they was going to select Barabbas. The Jews thought they made the decision. They really did. They actually thought that they made the decision. God had already decided which one. You get that? The men of the Jews thought that they made the decision. They just thought they made it. God already decided the one that was going to die. See, if they would have nailed Barabbas to the cross, Barabbas didn't have perfect blood. Not just because of his sin. Barabbas was a human being. Jesus was human in man form. But Jesus was also God in God form. So God had already decided which one. And then in chapter 19, we'll do one verse. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Meaning they whipped him. To the point that they whipped him. Now was this the whipping of the 39 stripes? I'm not positive because I have not read on further yet. Until this week, I'm at John 19. So my plan is to read, Carolyn, John 19. And there is 42 verses in John 19. Same amount of verses we did today, my plus two, there's 40 more verses that tells the rest of the story, and that's what we're going to study next week when we come back in here. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. He didn't want to. No, no. I think he knew he he wasn't. But the thing is, see, he had the people to please. He was a people pleaser. Yeah, he was a a, a ruler. He was, he was pleasing the people yeah. because the people is who installed Pilate to be the ruler of that day. That's right. The people could have had an uprising. Right. Like there's going on today, an uprising right now. Right. So the truth of the matter is the Jews decided which one they wanted. They thought... Yeah. But but God had already decided. Because he allowed Jesus to be in the right place at the right time. 
And now in chapter 19, they're already scourging him. Did Jesus know he was going to be scourged? Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Did okay. Jesus know the custom of the Jews that yeah. they would nail a man to a cross? Yeah. Is that is that sort of odd that Jesus knew that ahead of time? No, I don't. Why know. why would Jesus say in the Bible and I don't know where it is and we might find it before it's all over with. Why did Jesus say let this cup pass from me? Right. Because he knew what was ahead. But not my will. That's thy will. will. But thy will be done. Yeah. Not my will. See, Jesus could have said no. Right. He could have. He could have said no. Right. He could have called the angels, the abundance of angels. Yeah. See, Israel right now was fighting a battle in Israel yeah. by sending up rockets selectively and doing all the danger they want to to the enemy of Israel. But they hadn't even begun to fight. Because the bombs that they're sending up is like a BB gun. Because they know when they get attacked, it's going to be Katie bar the door. And they're holding back their pressure that they're going to put on the enemy. And I can tell you this, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that when one of them is a, much of an idiot to decide they want to escalate it, God is already going to say, uh-uh. That's right. Oh, no. That's right, Brother Kenny. My time is not yet. That's right. You can send your big, bad missiles all you want to, and all I'm going to do is swat them down like a fly. That's right. Remember what we read a minute ago about the stars yeah. turning off? Can God stop a missile? Yeah, yeah. He does it all the time. Yeah. I noticed today, this morning, before I got here, that they was launching missiles from yeah. the ground, and I noticed there was other missiles that was knocking them out of the sky. Yeah. Knocking them out of the sky. Could they hit where the missiles was launched? Yeah. And you know what that would do? That would cause an instant cease of them missiles. Because they would hit the target front and center. But they're knocking the missiles out one by one by one. They're knocking them out. So is Jesus king of kings and lord of lords? Yeah. Sure he is. And when we get here next Sunday, we'll continue with 19. So if you're able to read, Carolyn, find yourself opening up your Bible to read chapter 19. We might only get through half of it. It looks like if it takes me a little bit longer to do half of it, then we'll do half and we'll do the next half the following Sunday. But we'll just see how it goes. And I have made good time because I'm at 33 minutes. And that was my plan. Let's pray. Father, God, I delivered your word. And Lord, I delivered your word. I spoke your word verbatim in this whole chapter. And Lord, to this day, Pilate is questioning himself. Because no doubt, Pilate did not know who you was. Pilate knew about you, but he didn't know you. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone listening today to this short message that you allow people to know who you are as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That they just don't know you by a simple name. Lord, they know you because you're the Son of the living God. And Lord, that's all that matters. Many people know you by the name of Jesus, but they have no clue of who you really are. And Lord, I thank you for this chapter in John 18 that we study today. I'm looking forward to reading John 19 and seeing what we can learn in John 19. Help me do the same thing next week. Lord, let me define some of the verses, but help me read your word based on your spirit. 
and your power. So Lord, as we leave here, protect this place. Protect Israel. Lord, Israel's your country. And what goes on affects you fully. And Lord, you see every missile that is launched. God, you see every evil work that is going on. And God, you see our nation as weaker than it's ever been in our history. Amen. And Lord, only you can protect the United States and only you can protect Israel and only you can protect this world. Lord, we're going home one day and we know it. Help us, Lord, to live the lesson that we had this morning. Help us to examine our heart. Help us to rend our heart. Help us to fast and help us to cry. Help us to mourn because you're coming back. You're coming back. We just don't know when it is, but you're coming back. And yes, Lord, you are going to turn off the stars and you're going to blank out the sun. But Lord, I pray that the church is already happily home and with you for eternity. I thank you today. I thank you for this lesson. Go with us and bless now. Let us leave this place in safety. Watch over and protect it till we come back. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. amen.